All right. Now let's go to uh, let's go to tail sub problem two. Or of length two. So now we are moving to uh, time instant n minus two. Okay. So now assume you are assume once again we are at time. Suppose assume we are at time n minus two. Right, and assume also that um, assume the stock in in uh, inventory level is x n minus two. Okay, we are suppose that's the nominal level we are at, right? Now, now what should the inventory manager should what should the inventory manager do now at time instant n minus two? Now at n minus at time instant n minus two, he he has he, he whatever decision he takes will incur him a cost for that particular period. All right. So suppose he is at uh, he 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 takes a decision to order some goods. He will incur the cost of ordering uh, of uh, of ordering under ordering or over ordering and or whatever. All of that cost for part that particular time period is incurred. But then that decision also will impact the uh, the state that will occur in the future. The state that will occur in the future is is denoted x n is is going to be x n minus one. Right now, x n minus one will get realized as a function of x n minus two, x u n minus two, and the noise w n minus two. So, x n minus one will come about through that. But the previous calculation that we have done has told us what the optimal cost would be if you were to reach any such state x n minus one. So, as a function of the state that that you would reach, we have already as a function of the state that you could potentially reach, we have already computed the optimal cost, right. We, have, we already know that if I were to reach a certain inventory level in the next day, what the optimal cost is going to be. So, the way the inventory manager can think is, he has to now minimize two things. One is, he has, he has the cost that he will incur in this, in this period and the cost that he is going to incur if he reaches a particular state. So, effectively the the value function j n minus 1 that we have calculated for state n minus 1 onwards becomes the terminal cost ok becomes the terminal cost for this particular for this particular stage for stage n minus uh, for doing the calculations at stage n minus 2. So, n minus 2 at n minus 2 it is almost as if you have one stage to go with when you uh, uh, you incur a cost at this particular period and there is going to be a terminal cost based which is already which is given to you through a through your value function j n minus 1 as a function of the state that you would end up in right. So, so the the uh, so the the inventory manager the or the optimal inventory to order is um, inventory to order minimizes. So, it minimizes expected cost in period n minus 2 
प्लस द एक्सपेक्टेड कॉस्ट इन एन माइनस वन assuming an optimal policy is used in n minus 1 okay the yeah, op uh, so the expected cost in period n minus 1 assuming an optimal policy is used in that period n minus 1 right so With, so what does this equal? This equals your R of expectation of these terms R of x n minus two plus C of u n minus two plus. Now, if you were to reach some state x n minus one, what would be the optimal um, uh, optimal cost that you would uh, you would incur? Well. The optimal thing that the optimal cost you would incur is something you just calculated is j n minus one, x n minus one. So this is why doing this, uh, you can see this is why the the doing this calculation in the previous step for every possible every possible value of x n minus one is useful. So it's useful to do this for every x n minus one because now we have the value function. or the you have you know what now we have what the optimal cost is starting from any possible initial state so we can plug this in as a function of that state right and now that state uh, can get realized through xn minus 1 and un minus 1 and then we can calculate the expectation and so on but we can plug that in as a function uh, over there and so as a result we can uh, uh, we know ex uh, we can we can talk of what is going to be the optimal cost at this particular thing, at at stage n minus 2 all right so now so now remember xn minus 1 is xn minus 2 plus un minus 2 minus wn minus 2 so because of this now we have the, the last term becomes uh this can be substituted in the last term once again as before x n minus 2 is deterministic u n minus 2 because it's a function of just x n minus 2 is also deterministic right so consequently this uh, our minimization now becomes is a minimization over u n minus is can be written in this way so you can do x n minus 2 plus minimum minimizing this over minus 2 c of u n minus 2 plus expectation now of j n min uh, i'm running out of space here j n minus 1 of X n minus two plus U n minus two minus W n minus two. This whole thing is denoted, can be denoted as J n minus two of X n minus two. Let me write this more neatly. So this here is a function of X. n minus 2 we write this as j n minus 2 of x n minus 2 and the process of calculating this as before like i mentioned the minimization here this also yields as u n minus 2 star as a function mu n minus 2 star of x n minus 2 so all the noise here in is in wn minus 2 so the expectation is with respect to wn minus 2 right. so as you can see once again what we've got is by through this substitution now we've got the policy at time at time step n minus 2 all right so more more generally what we are, what we are doing is what we are getting is 
is this particular recursion that the value function at time k as a function of this as a function of a nominal state not necessarily the realized state okay as a function of a nominal state x k is is going to be r of x k plus the minimization over u k greater than equal to 0 of c of u k plus expectation of plus the expectation of the value function from the next time onwards evaluated at that state which is realized in this way. Okay. Now, this here this equation actually is essentially the cornerstone of of solving such problems. This is a, this is what is called the dynamic programming equation dynamic programming equation for the inventory management problem for the inventory control So, this is the dynamic programming equation for the inventory control problem. So, these functions uh, they uh, they these functions j k as I have mentioned they call they are denoted the, uh, they are called the value functions they are effectively capturing for you the uh, the uh, the optimal cost for the tail sub problem that starts from time k starting from any instant or uh, starting from any initial any state x k at that time at uh, time instant k. So, effectively what the problem has done is what you although what you are looking for is the optimal cost starting at time 0 for your specific initial state x 0 what the uh, this way of solving has effectively done is solve for you not just the optimal cost for that particular time and that particular initial state, but also for every intermediate time and every intermediate initial state. But the in the you it, this may seem like it is the it is uh, it is you know uh, it, it may seem wasteful because you have solved so you have effectively tried to solve so many other additional problems in in order to solve one. But it turns out that that is the that that is the simplif that is the source of the simplification. That if you do this step by step, you would be uh, in in the way that's illustrated here. Okay. Uh, you would actually get uh, get the solution for the original problem right so the way one proceeds is is that you start from the last step solve that particular problem go one step back solve that pro solve that problem substitute substituting the value function from the last step in it then 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 go to step n minus 3 substitute it in it the value function of step n minus 2 and so on and so forth and eventually you come to step 0 where you would get which is in fact essentially your original problem. The major simplification that has happened is that at every stage the optimization that you are doing is now not over the space of functions you are optimizing only over the space of actions because you are optimizing over vectors rather than over functions that is where the uh, the major simplification has come and all these other uh, benefits that we have got which is namely that we have got the value function and etc on along the way they are just side benefits of making this particular simplification that is not what we aim for what we aim for was the collapse of compl complexity from having to minimize over you know that many phi raised to 10 times phi raised to 10 times phi raised to 10 many options to something uh, much more concrete which is just an optimization at each step uh, optimization vector optimization at each step all right so so the uh, so so this is basically tells me the uh, give, puts us in um, in a position to state the uh, dynamic programming theorem okay so So, it says that for every initial state x 
So, uh, okay, I should mention the problem that we are looking at. We are looking. So, suppose we are. So, to state the uh, dynamic programming theorem, the suppose we uh, suppose we have you are minimizing this this objective, which is minimize is subject to. plus and x k plus. So, the dynamics are that x k plus 1 is f k of x k u k w k and you want to minimize this um, over all policies pi given by mu 0 to mu n minus 1 ok. Right. So, the theorem is as follows and uh, the initial state let us say is x 0 I will mention that as part of the theorem. So, for every initial for every initial state x 0, the optimal cost j star of x 0 of the above problem is equal to j 0 of x 0. What is j 0 of x 0? It is given by given by the last step of the following algorithm. So, the j n of x n is simply g n of x n. So, you just initialize the value function at uh, you know uh, for simplicity just initialize j n of x n as g n of x n and then write it this write it this the value function at each step k before that in the uh, as follows you minimize this u k where the minimization is with constraints u k of x k expectation with this of now this is the the cost in that time period which is g k of x k u k comma w k plus j k plus 1 now, but then you need to substitute substitute x k plus 1 through using your dynamics you know using these using these dynamics here ok. So, f k of x k u k w k and you do this for k equal to 0 all the way till k n minus equal to n minus 1. In other words, actually you need to do this in reverse, you start from k equal to n minus 1 and proceed all the way till 0 right ok. And moreover, moreover if I write if you write u k star equals mu k star of x k Um, minimizes. So, let us denote this by star minimizes star, then mu 0 star till mu n minus 1 star.
which is denoted by pi star is optimal. So, this policy is actually optimal all right. So, this boxed thing here equation star is called the dynamic programming equation. Dynamic programming equation. It was discovered by someone called by a scientist called Bellman. So, it is often also called the Bellman equation or the Bellman optimality equation. Okay. This is called the Bellman equation. So, this is what we uh, uh, so, this is the are going to be the way of solving any any dynamic programming problem. Essentially, you start from the uh, from the from the last step as if you had a time horizon 1 problem, find the optimal thing that you would do in that problem, use the or uh, use the, the cost that you the optimal cost or the value function that you get from that problem as the terminal cost of that problem with one step before. Then so, find the solution of the problem with one step before, find the value function for that and then we move one more step behind and so on and so forth and all coming all the way back then you eventually get to time step 0 and times and a terminal cost which is essentially the value function from uh, for time step 1 and, uh, and that is how you get to the, the, the optimal solution of your problem uh, of the dynamic programming problem. Okay. So, effective this is this this uh, the, the let us just once dwell on what is enabled this. The thing that has enabled this is that our optimal cost if you if you see our optimal uh, so, uh, or rather the cost function if you see is actually additive. You see it is a function of uh, you have your uh, terminal cost and you have these costs at each step right. You have a, you have costs at each step plus your state equation is also in this form where the next state is determined by the previous state the action you take in that uh, previous state and the noise in, the, uh, in at that time it doesn't depend on uh, in more complicated ways on steps uh, on states before or states after and so on so this this uh, the this structure of an of a separable cost function and also of this kind of interrelation between the current state and the next state that is what uh, allows us to make this work. This is what makes you know this kind of a cost which is which uh, which is uh, which is cumulative over of co cumulative of the costs over at each time step. This this sort of cost occurs when you are say uh, computing say the total reward total cost uh, total amount of money you make um, over a time horizon or say the the total um, say uh, uh, amount of distance you travel uh, you have to travel or the total amount of time spent etc. Any of these things which are additive across time periods can be written in this sort of form and that is uh, once it is additive like this you can it can be reasoned through in a recursive manner and that is that is precisely what is being done what we are doing here. So, this give that is that is what we uh, get to this is what is called the dynamic programming equation. So, now uh, only one uh, topic special topic remains here which is which is that which is solving such problems in in the when you are dealing with uh, when with when you have problems with a very specific cost structure and that is what I will do next I, we can talk we will talk about problems where the cost function is quadratic and the dynamics are linear. In that case, some a very simple form emerges for the optimal policy. Okay, so the optimal the optimal uh, policy and the optimal cost function ends up having an extremely simple form. That's that's what I want to just show you. So we let us now uh, apply what we know about dynamic programming to a problem to a problem with a very specific structure where the cost is quadratic, the dynamics are linear, and the noise is independent across time instance. Okay. 
this is this is prob the uh, a favorite problem of uh, of control theorists and and in operations research it's what's called the problem of linear linear systems with quadratic cost uh, and we will we will find what the optimal policy for that that sort of problem is now uh, the uh, recall before i uh, before i go into this specific problem recall what we were talking about in the uh, for the uh, for for this uh, in the previous lecture which is which is we were we were referring to a problem where you wanted to minimize a cost like this over a time horizon n a cost that is comprised of a terminal cost and a cost at each step and we had dynamics that were given in this way which were in which the next state was defined as a function of the previous state the actions and some noise. Uh, 